Welcome to our review on speed time graphs. Now, what we're looking at here then is the second type of graph that we can see associated with our motion. So this time, if you look carefully at the axis on the graph, you'll see time is still on the x-axis, but this time on the y-axis, what we see is that that is speed. Now, what that means is that the different forms that our line can take on the graph mean different things. So first of all, if we have a look at the section marked A on our graph, what we can see there, because it is a diagonal line there, then we have a steady increase in speed. When we get to point B on our graph, then that horizontal line represents a constant speed. And then when we come to part C, then we can see that the speed is actually decreasing. Okay, and it's a steady decrease because it's the diagonal line again. If we had a curved line on our graph, then we would know the, the, that the acceleration is changing. To give you an example of that, then what we can see here is a slightly more complex version of the speed time graph. So rather than just having that series of different forms of straight line, we have some curved lines in there. So what we see is between point O and A, then that is a straight line there, okay, on the diagonal, which tells us that our speed is steadily increasing. So we've got a constant acceleration. Between points A and B, however, because we've started to get that curve, the speed is still increasing, but it's not at a constant acceleration, okay? The acceleration there is decreasing, hence that curve. When we come to points B to C, then what we know there is our speed is constant because obviously it's not going up on our y-axis anymore, but time is still increasing. So that'd be the equivalent of our car traveling at 30 miles an hour. Between points C and D, we see that deceleration, okay? Because we can see the decrease in speed at that point. And then between points D and E, again, we've got the horizontal line, which tells us our speed is constant once more. Now, what we can see in this graph then is a comparison between two different cars. So it's still a speed time graph. And then the difference we can see is the actual gradient on those two lines. Because our car A has a higher gradient or a steeper slope on that line, then we know it's got a greater acceleration. So quite simply, the thing to remember there is that the steeper the gradient, then the greater the acceleration. To use this graph to calculate our actual acceleration then, what we do is the change in speed divided by the time taken for the change to take place. So the kind of question we might get is to calculate the acceleration of car A. Now what we'll find there then is car A, if we look at our graph there, is going to have a change in speed from zero at the bottom left of our graph there all the way to 30 meters per second by the time we get to the 25 second marker. So our change in speed is going to be 30 minus zero, which gives us 30 meters per second. And the time taken for that change to take place is 25 minus zero, which gives us 25 seconds. So plugging those two numbers into our calculation at the top there, 30 is our change in speed divided by 25, our time, gives us the answer of 1.2 meters per second squared. The other thing that we can actually calculate using one of our speed time graphs then is the actual distance that something has traveled. Now, the way that we calculate the distance is by finding the area under that graph. So what we're gonna do here is just see how we go through that. First thing is we're not gonna be able to calculate an irregular area, okay? What we need to do is break it up into the shapes that we actually know. So triangles and rectangles are the general pattern that we will see here. So when we put those two lines on, we can see we've divided up into two triangles and then a rectangle between them. Now to calculate the area of our rectangle, it's gonna be our length times our height. And then to calculate the area of a triangle is gonna be the length times the height times a half. Okay, because obviously a triangle is half the size of a rectangle. So if we actually work out those three calculations then, if we're having a look at our first triangle, which is our AB triangle, then we can see that it's taken 10 seconds. So it's gonna be 10 times by our speed, which is seven, and then we times that by half. And that gives us our answer of 35 meters. We'll do the same for rectangle BC. So this time it's going from 10 to 30. So that's a 20 second difference. And again, seven meters per second. So 20 times seven gives us 140 meters. 
and then finally triangle CD there. So we're going to go from 30 to 50, which is 20 seconds. And again, it's a seven meters per second speed. So that tells us then that it's going to be 20 times seven times the half once more as we're talking about a triangle gives us 70 meters. Once we've got those three areas, all we need to do is add them together. So 35 plus 140 plus 70 gives us our total area or the total distance that we've traveled of 245 meters.